Hello and welcome to a second video tutorial on quadratic function graphing. Today we'll start with the parent graph of f of x equals x squared. From there we know that the vertex is 0, 0 and the a value, which is the number before x squared, is 1. So this could have said 1x squared. Now what would have happened if I put in a different function f of x equals 2x squared. Now your vertex is still the same, 0, 0, but this time the a value is 2. So I'm going to do a quick table here. I'm going to write in f of x, or just x right here, x squared here, and 2x squared here. And let's put some values in. I'll go ahead and start with 0. 0 squared is 0. Doubling 0, of course, is going to be 0. 1, 1x one squared is 1, 2 times 1 is 2. Then I have x is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 times 4 is 8. If I put in a negative 1, I'm also going to get negative 1 squared is positive 1, 2 times 1 is 2, negative 2 is going to be negative 2 squared is 4 and 8. So these points will be 0, 0. And then we have 1, 2, and then 2, and 8. Let me just plot those three. If we plot three points, we can usually get a pretty good graph. So I'll plot 0, 0. I'll plot 1, and 2, and 2, and 8. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now my mirror image, my axis of symmetry, is along the x equals 0 line. So I'll just go across that, count one and one more, count two and two more. So this graph will look approximately like this. Now that's considerably skinnier than the original graph, and the name of this type of graph is often called stretched. Because it's a little bit like you're pulling from the top and put in. My nickname for this graph is often called skinny. Now that will happen when you have an A value which is greater than 1. Okay? Now, Next, let's look at and see if we have one half of x squared. I'll still think about the same approach. I'll say x, x squared, and one half x squared. Now, in this case, if I start with zero, I'll be fine, and I'll end up with zero, half of zero, which is zero. Now, instead of picking out one, I'm going to pick an even number so that I can get some good points. I'll pick out two. 2 squared is 4. Now, half of 4 is 2. And then instead of picking the next value out as 3, I'll go with the even numbers. I'll go with 4. 4 squared is 16. Half of 16 is 8. So let's plot these three points and then do the mirror image. 0, 0. 2 and 4. And 4 and 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And my mirror images will go around the axis of symmetry of x equals 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 1, 2. Okay? Now this particular graph I messed this up. Great. Sorry, folks. I need to change this because I was looking at the wrong values. Because in reality, here I go. I'll put them here. 0, 0, 2, and 2, and 4, and 8. So I have 0, 0. Now 2 and 2 is right here. Now 4 and 8 will be right here. And my mirror images, 2 and 2, 
and then four and four more. So this graph approximately like this. Y equals one half x squared. Now I'm going to plot the traditional parent graph inside, which is going to be one, one, two, and four, three, and nine. And that will graph like such. So we can see that being the y equals x squared graph along there. Next, let's see what happens when we go negative. Now, I'm not always going to do a table here. But what happens here when a is less than 0? you are going to reflect, this is officially called reflect vertically. So, in this case, my vertex is still 0, 0. But instead of going to the right one and up one, I'm going to the right one and down one the right 2 and down 4, the right 3 and down 9. My axis of symmetry, it's best to show it with the points. So now I'll go over here, 1 and 1, 2 and 2, 3 and 3. So this graph, this curve basically, will look very similar to the x squared graph but it is going to be upside down. So let's take a look and see if we take a traditional graph that has a different vertex. So for this next particular piece right here, f of x equals negative x plus 3 squared plus 4. Now remember, our function value looks like this. This is our vertex form x minus h quantity squared plus k. Okay, so the a here would equal to negative 1. That's in front of the whole thing. So I know that means it's going to reflect. Now the h value, if I look inside here, it says plus 3. That means that we go the opposite. H happens to be negative 3. So that means it's going to go left 3. Now the K value is the number that follows the whole thing. That comes from the negative 4. And it's exactly the same. And that means it's going to go down 4. So for this one, I'll start by plotting my vertex. I'll write the vertex here as being negative 3 and negative 4, which we can get right from the vertex form. We plot that, and I'm going to go ahead and erase this other graph to avoid confusion. I'll go to the left 3 and down 4. There's my vertex. Now I also saw that it was going negative 1. So I know it's going to reflect down. So I am going to, instead of going to the right one and up one, I'll go to the right one and down one, to the right two and down four. My axis of symmetry will come down here, so I'll flip it over that line. This is called a horizontal reflection. My graph doesn't allow for much more space, so I'll just graph from here. Now that is a combination. Now, let's try another one. Now, in this case, if I try a function such as this, let's say I have something along the line of negative 1 half x plus 4 squared. So, 
my a is equal to negative one half. H is the opposite of positive four, and K is nothing being added. That's going to be zero. Now, because I am going to be smaller, I'm going to use that idea, my parent graph of negative one half x. So I know this is pointing down. And I also know that it's going to be what's called compressed, OK? Which I sometimes might call a fat graph. So I will plot my vertex, which is 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. Now, instead of going to the right one, and down one, because it's going to be a half, I'm going to go to the right two and down two. So that would be two, and you have two squared is four, negative one half times four is negative two. And I'll try four. Four squared is 16. Negative one half times 16 is negative eight. So I'll go to the right 4 and go down 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. Now my axis of symmetry is right here. So I'll count 2 and 2, and I'll count 4 and 4. So this graph will look like this. Okay, now I could have done that with a variety of things. I'll put one more up here. This time I'm going to try f of x equals, let's say, 2 times x minus 1 squared, and I'll say minus 3. So I know my a value is 2. Now, the, before I said compressed, this is called stretched, sometimes known as skinny. My h value is the opposite of 1. My k value is the following parts. So my vertex is 1, negative 3. What I'll do now is to go ahead and plot that which will go to the right one and down three, right here. There's my vertex, one comma negative three. Now this one points up, but because it is being doubled, instead of saying one and one, it's going to be one and two times one, or two. And instead of saying two and four, it's going to be two and two times four, or eight. So I'm going to pretend this is 0, 0, to the right 1 and up 2. To the right 2 and up 4. Up 8, I'm sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. My axis of symmetry goes straight up. So I go across my points. And here is how this graph is going to look. y equals 2 times x minus 1 squared minus 3. Thank you.